for life. Okay, we are back. This is Senate Health and Welfare, and it is March 10th. We are moving on to S-285. And Jen, I know that you've been working hours on incorporating the suggestions that uh, the group that we had in yesterday uh, was working on. So and I, I would just well, would like to thank the group publicly for the work that they've done to um, improve the bill as we go through. We can make decisions about the language together and then we'll have a little bit of time tomorrow. Do we have you tomorrow with you? I think I think so. Yeah, I, think I thought so. doing some combo with the house, depending on what they're up to. But yeah. right. Uh, OK, so we'll and so hopefully we'll be able to finalize the bill uh, tomorrow morning. But this is an opportunity for us to get some of the language that, as recommended from various folks. And you also have language from uh, Patrick Flood that uh, we can perhaps share and look at. Yeah, did, did that get sent to all of I didn't. I don't know. It has. hasn't yet. We'll, okay. we'll talk about that as we go along. Jen, I think what you might want to do, if you can, is um, as we go through the bill, maybe there are some comments from Patrick's uh, short email that would fit in. I don't know if that's something you can do on the fly or not. I think I'm going to have to compare it with the version from. Ah, uh, yeah, OK. Just because I think in some places I changed. OK. You change things in ways that OK. I'll, I'll keep my I'll, I'll try and keep my eyes open as well, okay. and, and then we'll get some may be new, and so that certainly is easy enough to discuss in context. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Turning it over to you. Great. Good morning, Jennifer Carby, Office of Legislative Counsel. The chair has let me sit in her seat at the head of the table today. Um, so we're looking at a new draft of S-285. This is draft 3.1, and it has highlighting in blue, little easier to see on the screen than I think it is printed, um, but I didn't want to confuse anyone since I had used yellow yesterday, and I know um, the stakeholder group had provided their changes to me, at least with both my yellow and their blue, and so I thought it would be easier this way. Um, so I have incorporated everything that was in yellow yesterday. I have incorporated all of those changes as kind of the baseline for what we're looking at now, so what we're looking at is changes from what we reviewed yesterday, just for context. Um, and so, and I think the, the chair spoke some, but there was a, a group of a number of the witnesses that you heard from yesterday and some uh, others who they were working with who per, put forward these changes. So it's not, I don't think it's necessarily consensus across all of the witnesses you've heard from, but many of them put forth these changes and that's what's in here. So the first section is still on hospital global payment design. Um, although we may want to change that name because it's, it really talks more about value-based payments if you go there. Um, so I will make a note to myself about potentially changing that. So this would still appropriate 1.4 million to the Green Mountain Care Board to engage consultants. And this would say to develop a process still consistent with their, uh, their payment reform, the scope of their payment reform duties in the Green Mountain Care Board statutes. And then it would add and including the meaningful participation of healthcare providers, payers, and other stakeholders in all stages of the development for establishing and distributing value-based payments, including global payments from all payers to Vermont hospitals. Um, so I'll stop at that point and just say, this is adding in that concept of meaningful participation by stakeholders in this process, as well as in the process in section two and also talking about value-based payments, including global payments, but, but making that a broader concept of value-based payments. So then this is a, this process is supposed to, um, again, establish it, come up with a process for establishing and distributing value-based payments, including global payments from all payers to Vermont hospitals that will, and then it keeps the language about helping move the hospitals away from fee-for-service, and provide hospitals with predictable, sustainable funding that's aligned across multiple payers, consistent with the Act 48 principles as codified in the Green Mountain Care Board statutes, and sufficient to enable the hospitals to deliver high quality, affordable health care services to patients. And, and then there's some changes to this language 
uh, this would say, and take into consideration the necessary cost of providing services and not be based solely on historical charges. So it's not specifically saying based on the actual and necessary costs, but instead take into consideration the necessary costs and not be based solely on historical charges. And there is a suggestion from Patrick Flood's language here to add, uh, and this was still using that former version of the language, but actual and necessary operating costs. So you could think about whether you want to say take into consideration the necessary operating costs of providing services. And I don't know. In which section? Where? This is on page two. Page two. Page two, line three, line three and four. The necessary operating costs is more inclusive. Would it make sense to have including uh, including operating costs? You know, I don't want to restrict it, but it's services and operating costs. I try to. I think it's a. I don't think the word is necessary. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I'm in a position to determine whether it's an appropriate addition at this point or not. I think it might be helpful to have the, the other stakeholders weigh in on. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I mean, cost is broader than just specifically saying operating costs. So just saying costs would include operating costs. Yeah. Right. Cost providing. It services. says costs of services. Yeah. And that includes that would for me that's top to bottom on cost of services because you've got environmental supports, you have all kinds of supports, including, you know, so that fold into operation. All right. Okay, well we'll we'll I'm sort that hearing, one out. I'm not hearing significant interest at the moment, so maybe we'll leave yep, that keep out. going. And um, we'll see if others Weigh in strongly in favor. Uh, all right, the next is um, so that is all about determining this, uh, developing the process for these value based payments. Number two is um, that this consultant would work with the board to determine how best to incorporate value based payments, including hospital global payments. So, again, introducing this idea of value based payments more broadly into the hospital board's hospital budget review. ACO certification and budget review and other regulatory processes. And then they kind of combined this idea from what was number three into this one. So including assessing the impacts of regulatory processes on the financial sustainability of Vermont hospitals and identifying potential opportunities to use regulatory processes to improve hospitals financial health. I'm going to keep going or do you want to pause there? Uh, keep going. If someone wants to say something, just sort of raise your hand and ask the question. But yeah, let's keep going. Yes, I, I, I do have a question. Um, Go ahead. Based payments, including hospital global payments. So, what would some other value based payments be like? I'm not a great person. Yeah, that, can I can I phone a friend? Do you have other examples of value based payments off the top of your head? Yeah, I mean, the capitate, this is Mike Fisher Healthcare Advocate, the, the capitated like payments that are currently being used by Medicaid. And okay. But yes, there are a number of them, and I think, you know, Ina Beckus could probably talk to you about what other ones she is particularly interested in exploring um, on the spot. I'm not coming up with right. the last one. Okay. Yeah. Could be bundled payments. Yep. yep, that's another example. Thank you. Yep. All right, so then this incorporated that number three that had been recommended by the hospitals in along with number two in a better way than I was able to come up with on my own. So that, I think that's helpful. And then um, they're taking out a number five <laughs> that I'll, I'll speak to a little bit in a moment. Um, so they would then modify what would now be number three to say recommend a methodology for determining the allowable rate of growth in Vermont hospital budgets. And instead of including, it would be, which may include the use of national and regional indicators of growth in the healthcare economy and other appropriate benchmarks. And it provides some examples, such as the hospital producer price index, medical consumer price index, bond rating metrics, and labor cost indicators. Oh. That's good. Um, all right. And then 
five is is structure. This is the idea of looking at ways to use global payments for providers of community based services. And it's my understanding that this concept will be included in some language to be proposed by uh, Ina Bacchus from the Agency of Human Services. So not getting rid of this idea entirely, but putting it potentially in its own section. I haven't seen the language yet, although it may have come in while I was on my way into the office. I'll check. Um, I do, I've, I've already fallen down on the job of trying to incorporate Patrick Flood's comments. So if you go back to the earlier part of this, where we were looking at the process for establishing and distributing value-based payments to hospitals, he would add a D and an E. So where we ended with C on page two, lines three and four. So we're going back a little bit back. Um, after taking into consideration necessary costs, not based solely on historical charges, he would add a subdivision D. And I think he mentioned this yesterday in his testimony, develop options for the design and implementation of a standardized system of fees for hospital inpatient and outpatient services across all payers. And an E, determine how best to secure comprehensive data and analytical services from hospital financial analysts to evaluate hospital fees, revenue sources, and financial and operating reporting and metrics. Uh, it, well, it's by by oh, using the hard. word by using the word fees, does what what's the implication there? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying right, to sort yeah. that out a little bit. Right. I mean, to me, it does sound like it's it's sticking more closely with the fee for service. Yeah. Payment model. Um, unless it's just considered to be a way of, of sort of calculating the value based, the amount of the value based payments to be provided. But I know there was some discussion yesterday about with concern about standardized costs across hospitals. Give us what we want to email that to us. So I don't know. If Aaron, can you email that to all of us so we can actually read that? Here. Do you have it, Aaron? Because I can do that if you don't. Yes, I know it's hard to listen. To <laughs> yep, Aaron has it. Go ahead, Aaron. Send it along. Yeah, and I think there's language later that, or maybe it got taken out. I don't know. That sort of gets. Let, yeah, out. let's 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 continue on. Uh, let's continue on, Jen, and then uh, we we've highlighted where this might be, and then we'll, yes, we'll look at it. Out. Yeah, I'm, keep going. The F note in my column here. Okay. Um, all right. So then we're back to page three, and we still have these reports coming in. November first would be an update on the from the board on its use of funds to the health reform oversight committee, and then by January fifteenth, a report on the use of the funds appropriated in this in this section, and taking out language about the status of the efforts to get Medicare participation. We're going to see Medicare participation come up in a, in a new section a few down, um, but it doesn't no longer fits in this because we moved the money and the, the duty somewhere else. Uh, so this would just be a report on the use of the funds appropriated in this section, and it's to this committee, the Finance Committee, and House Health Care. Are you ready to move on to section two? Yes. All right. Section two is the delivery system transformation and community engagement. So this would uh, retain that 2.5 million you saw in the last draft. Although I will note that I think in the version that was sent to me, the Green Mountain Care Board still believes they need the full 3 million. But this would do 2.5 million from the general fund to the Green Mountain Care Board in FY23 to engage one or more consultants, and then this language has changed a bit, with expertise and community engagement, preferably with experience in working with a diverse rural population, and one or more consultants with expertise in health system design to assist the board in consultation with the Director of Healthcare Reform and AHS to build on successful healthcare delivery reform efforts by, and then our, our um, verb tense changes. So we have facilitating a patient-focused community inclusive plan for, and they just had Vermont's healthcare, I put delivery potentially, Vermont's healthcare delivery system 
to reduce inefficiencies, lower costs, improve population health outcomes, increase access to essential services, including both providing the analytics to support delivery system transformation and leading the broad-based community engagement process, and providing support and technical assistance to hospitals and communities to facilitate, and then changing the terminology, planning for delivery system reform and transformation initiatives. Talks about the community engagement process and some language has changed throughout here. Can I stop? Yeah. You, um, so back on, this is a lot to absorb. <laughs> um, back on page three, yeah. the, why did they change it to preferably with experience and working with, I, I mean, we made a whole point yesterday that we really wanted a consultant that could work with. Yep, I can't speak to the yeah. why. I, I don't. I think we should say with experience in working with a diverse rural population, not preferred. Well, I, the only the only thing I can think of, and we'll have to ask, uh, maybe we can ask Robin, is that maybe there's someone that has experience, but not not as much in the rural parts of the country as we would like, and the person that has the rural experience might not appear to be as effective. I, I don't know what the reason for that is, but. Well, I think that there are multiple consultants that they would be hiring. So sure, it's really important that they don't have a, if they right now think that they know somebody and they're trying to write this to hire that person, that makes me uncomfortable. Uh, I don't, I <laughs> probably, don't, I, I don't think that and I, I, the think, case. I think we we really want to make sure that the consultant is is experienced working with not just an urban population because it's right. the the crisis in healthcare is we is get it rural. <laughs> we get it so so let, Jen can we reach out to Robin and ask that question why that word is there that's important to us okay. All right. Anything else in this part before we look at the details on the community engagement process? And I did do some, I don't think they will matter to anyone other than my spacing here. Um, I did do a little bit of just um, changing of the different levels so that the lead in language from the subsection A, um, I didn't even change it. It's it's probably more in the weeds than you care about. I just noticed when we were looking through this yesterday that the community engagement process language led uh, came sort of was was put in like it came after the lead in language from A, and that didn't fit. So I made it in its own subsection B. That's all. Um, so the community engagement process shall, and now instead of inform communities about what's going on, it would include hearing from and sharing information, trends, and insights with communities about the current state of the healthcare providers in their hospital service area. And it moves trends into that earlier part. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, in their hospital service area, and then it leads into, it continues on, unmet healthcare needs in their community and opportunities to address those needs. So it, it collapses what was two separate provisions into one. So include hearing the Community engagement process shall include hearing from and sharing information, trends, and insights with communities about the current state of the healthcare providers in their hospital service area, unmet healthcare needs in their community, and opportunities to address those needs. And so that's number one. And number two is provide opportunities at all stages of the process for meaningful participation by employers, consumers, Healthcare professionals and healthcare providers, including those providing primary care services, Vermonters who have direct experience with all aspects of Vermont's healthcare system, and Vermonters who are diverse with respect to race, income, age, and disability status. So it's taking, I think, really most or all of the same elements, but package them, packaging them a little bit differently. <laughs> Ready for C? Yes. All right. C is that the Greenmont Care Board shall use a portion of the funds appropriated in subsection A, and this takes out the language about collaborating with the Blueprint for Health. Uh, so they would use a portion of those funds to contract with a current 
or recently retired primary care provider to assist the board in assessing and strengthening the role of primary care in its regulatory processes and to inform the board's efforts in payment reform and delivery system transformation from a primary care perspective. So Senator Lyons, you said, you know, I brought up that primary care advisory group yesterday and you said that you had something to say about that. Do you not think that that's an effective group or? Well, I think it's a great group advisory, but this, this person or in this consultant would have uh, a different set, a different authority, and that is could weigh in independently and collect data independently. An advisory group would be a group that's asked uh, on behalf of the Green Mountain Care Board, and this would be something a little different. I think we also heard from Patrick Flood um, that having the independent voice was uh, something important rather than simply advisory. So um, I, I, I think this is an important addition. And would this be the way it's written, Jen? Is this a permanent thing or a No, they would be contracting okay. with someone. Okay. No, I'm just okay. using a portion of those same funds. Okay. All right. And then no changes in subsection D. Those are the two reports, the, the update in November to the Health Reform Oversight Committee and the report in January to the this committee and other legislative committees of jurisdiction. Section three is a new section and it may actually be largely replaced by what Dina Aaron has helpfully printed out for me Dina's proposed language. Oh, and I do see Nolan has his hand up, so I don't know if you want to stop. Yes. For that. Yes. I didn't um, see your hand up, so go ahead. No, you're right next to me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little slow. I have a hard time finding my hand sometimes. Um, I was just thinking about that primary care piece. I might, one suggestion might be to end or someone with primary care experience. So a lot of times you get people who aren't retired, but aren't practicing anymore and do a lot of this type of work. So I don't know if you want to, you know, because you might have somebody who's a consultant who is a, used to be a, a primary care nurse and maybe right. even does this, but isn't practicing anymore, but they're not retired. So you, I don't know if you want to say or has, uh, primary care experience. I'm just trying to think about ways to broaden that pool because of people who have the experience you're looking for. I don't know that, if, I mean, I'm not sure if somebody was not currently practicing but hadn't retired that they would necessarily be uh, unable to fulfill this role the way with current or retired. I think the intent is clear that it's somebody who has, has practiced fairly yeah. recently Okay, just as someone who's been doing a lot of uh, RFPs and contracting lately, I've suddenly been, I've, I've learned that sometimes we get caught up or the language can hinder more than help. So I'm just trying to make yeah. sure. Yeah, that... uh, no, I think, I think Jen is right that, okay. the, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, um, uh, did you, Jen? Did you want me to just double check and see whether they're you no know, go ahead? Never mind. I'm just I'll do it myself. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so the next section is new. Um, it's a proposal, it's a proposal from the group about including um, Medicare and payment reform and delivery system transformation. Um, I, I I'm not quite sure how it, it relates to this language that I also have from Ina that's the same six hundred thousand. Um so I'm not sure, and I don't believe there's necessarily consensus on the language that Ina provided. So I'm not sure how you want to. I'm not sure how you want to approach that. We'll look at the language that's in the bill for now, maybe, and we can figure out how this other proposal fits. Do you um, have do you have Ina's language? I do have Ina's language. Aaron printed it out for me. It came in this morning while I was in the middle of. Yeah, that's what I was just going to look for. And then, why don't we? go through the language that's there, and then we'll come back and look at Ina's language, and we can talk about that. Great, so as written right now in the bill, the uh, 600,000 would be appropriated to the Green Mountain Care Board in FY23 to support 
the board and the director of healthcare reform in AHS in the design and development of a proposed agreement with CMMI, uh, which may include engaging consulting and analytic support in order to include Medicare and Vermont's payment reform and delivery system transformation initiatives. And it would maintain this language saying the board would ensure any services it procures with the funds are supplemental to and not duplicative of analytics and other support available through AHS. And it would have a report due uh, on January, by January 15th on the use of the funds and the status of efforts to get Medicare participation in Vermont's payment reform and delivery system transformation initiatives. So what was section uh, three is now section four, but it's a totally different section four. So this was the language that had been uh, looking at updating the statewide HIT plan to recommend ways to um, connect clinical and claims data through an enterprise master patient index and work with other systems that are already in place in Vermont and uh, include social determinant of health data and potentially integrate with other unique person identifiers in other state agencies and departments. I think you heard about this, about Ina's proposal on this yesterday. So this is, um, I believe her language, but also came from the stakeholder group. So I think there's general agreement on this from the stakeholders. And this would instead direct the Health Information Exchange Steering Committee to continue its work to create one health record for each person that integrates data types to include healthcare claims data, clinical mental health and substance use disorder services data, and social determinants of health data. In furtherance of these goals, the HIE Steering Committee um, would include a data integration strategy in its 2023 Health Information Exchange Strategic Plan to merge and consolidate claims data in VCURES with the clinical data in the Health Information Exchange. And it would continue to appropriate 500,000 to the Agency of Human Services for this work. I don't know if that funding is necessary, if that's the right amount, um, but this is the other 500,000 that came from the original, what was a $3 million appropriation and now a 2.5 million appropriation to the Green Mountain Care Board. For the delivery system. It, it kind of doesn't it I guess the the amount is going to depend on the extent to which they uh, they work with a variety of organizations and practices so I don't I I don't know whether this is accurate or not that's all I wanted to flag is this was yeah. a, a legacy number from the prior version right we could, down. yeah, I, 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 su I suspect it might be less than that, but if there is any, if there are any capital expenditures that go out to various organizations or clinics, it could be more than that. If there are, is software that provides linkages with various organizations, it could be more than that. I don't know. Nolan, do you have a thought on that? I was going to suggest, um, I would reach out to the Green Mountain Care Board to see what they think the number should be since they're the experts on this and then yeah. maybe leave it blank. I, yeah, I like Jen's term, legacy appropriation. Yeah. Jen, do, uh, Nolan, do you want to reach out to, to Robin or? Yeah, I'll reach out okay. to the folks there and I'll see if I can. I think it may be more Ina. This is her proposal. And it's All right, Ina. Okay. She heads up the Information Exchange Steering Committee. Got it. I'll do it right now. Right. Okay. Terrific. This, um, this basically sounds like this language is just keep doing what you're doing language. It's not anything new that they're doing. Uh, the first sentence directs them to continue their work. The second sentence does direct them to include a data integration strategy in their next strategic plan. Okay. So that may be something that they were not necessarily planning to do, but I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, are they? Uh, is the money actually being utilized to take a step forward? A plan is a plan, but action is action. <laughs> so. Well, and if this five hundred thousand is base funding that's already they already have, or if this they yeah do funding, yeah, uh, yeah I, don't, I don't know, it's unclear. 
And then in the next, uh, you haven't gotten to the next session. The next session no, but no, 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 we're not. The purpose of this section is to consolidate the data about individuals. Right. The idea being, and this is one of the recommendations, I think, from um, Donna Kinzer and, and <laughs> from the uh, consultant to the Affordable Accessible Healthcare Task Force about really trying to take more steps to get integrated records so that you have so that so that providers can be looking at more information about their patient than just the services that that provider has delivered and they can get information on their social determinants of health and um, and services they've received from other providers around the state or around the region so that they're getting a full picture of the patient when the patient is in their office and um, not and to center this question about 500,000 whether it's new funding or well this would be new funding and I think the question is is there work that's going to be done as a result of this language that requires an additional 500,000 or is that work that they're already doing that they would be continuing to do in the absence of that additional funding in which case you might use it elsewhere all right are we ready for section five Section five is a new section. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not new statute. Um, I mean, it's an existing statutory section, and it's this is the statute actually on V cures. So we don't use the. I'm not sure we use the German here, but this is the All Pair Claims Database uh, for Vermont. And I can't recall if you have had testimony on this or not, but the House Healthcare Committee has because this same section was in the Green Mountain Care Board's um, bill that they put forward this year, H four ninety eight. And this would, so this language, the change in the language is on page 10. There's a lot of existing language that is here for context. Um, and this proposal would delete language in the current VCURE statute that prohibits information from being provided to the board in a way that discloses the identity of oh. the patient. Um, and so this is important if they're going to do, if they're going to be able to do the work that is being described um, in the previous section about really being able to combine all of the information about a person, they're going to need to know who the person is, even if after that, if information is made available from the cures um, to, to others as it currently is for research purposes and otherwise it would need to be de-identified again and that's what a lot of the HIPAA language in here is about and so that's why you're seeing so much extra language um, because there was interest among the uh, from the board in making sure that members were aware that there's still all of the same HIPAA protections in there that would still be in there it would just allow the information to be provided to the board um, in a way that does disclose the identity of the patient so that they can it can be used for the, the exactly for matching right. yeah I think, we, I think we we talked this a little bit about this uh with the donna kinzer report when we were talking to epmi not, so yeah okay right so the idea being if you're going to have some kind of a master patient index which is the mpi part of the mpi um yeah. then you need to be able to to identify this, the patient in all of the settings that they're getting the services from, which sort of necessarily right. requires that they that the information not be de-identified, so be identifiable when it comes in. Yep. Um, Madam Chair. <laughs> Next question. Um, <laughs> that, so I guess I, I, I totally understand why they're asking for this, but just sc scrolling through this current law language, I, I just want to make sure that that the, I mean it says compliant with HIPAA, but then it also notwithstands something about HIPAA, the current language, the current law language in um, D. Not yeah, that, but, but I think you'll like that notwithstanding HIPAA. I don't know really why notwithstanding HIPAA particularly, but it says the comprehensive healthcare information system shall not publicly disclose any data that contain direct personal identifiers. Okay, that seems contradictory because it's not withstanding. Well, they're not. Have. I'm not sure why it not with this existing law, and I don't think I wrote this one. Um, I'm not sure why it not withstands HIPAA, other than perhaps there are circumstances under HIPAA where they could disclose that, and they're saying even though we could, we won't. Okay. 
um, or they, or even though they could, they they can't, even though they could under potentially under HIPAA. Is there another part of statute that you know of that requires them to use certain data security um, processes or whatever? Because if they're going to have, I mean, I know that a lot of this already happens. So this is right. So this is already out of the stack. My understanding, but. they currently get Medicare data that is not de-identified. Right. And that's what I've heard in testimony from the board. But does the board have any higher level of, of data security requirements? Or does the state just in general, um, just given how much data they would have with people to actually- Right, I mean, yes, there is actually, this issue came up as the chair may recall in LCAR, a um, couple of us in the context <laughs> of features. Um, Yes, there are some existing requirements and the board has this information. So I might, I know Robin's been watching, so I might ask Robin to follow up with the committee um, with the, the data security information that they provided to LCAR. Okay. Um, because yes, there is a fair amount of, and a lot of that goes into who they contract with to maintain VCures right. and how that data is secured. Right, and how they, how they have to write their contracts so that any contractor who sees all this data is, you know. Exactly. So there's yeah. so some of that I think is in here with the way that they are able to provide. Um, so for in, like on page 11, um, where it talks about um, collaboration for uh, creation of uh, or development of limited use data sets, the criteria and process procedures to ensure that HIPAA compliant limited use data sets are accessible. There's also, to the extent allowed under HIPAA, the data is available as a resource for various uh, various parties to continuously review utilization. And then there's also, again, so this is all sort of running through HIPAA. Mm -hmm. And that's my understanding of where they end up um, and would continue to have to de-identify the data. Um, so, so you might be able to tell that it's the same individual person who is getting various services, but not who they, not any way to determine who they are. Yeah, I, I guess just um, in finance, um, we have had this where we've, where we've asked the tax department, you know, about sharing data and using it for analysis or, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, whether somebody could be eligible for a certain program based on their income level, et cetera. And tax is extremely tight with their data. It doesn't share it with most people, even for, even de-identify or, you know, or it, it has really, so I guess I want to make sure that maybe there's not, I want to make sure that I understand the level of data security that's happening. Yep, because and I, I really I, touchy hearing, data. <laughs> yep, and very much, very much what the, the path that Elkar was on a couple months ago. Um, and I would encourage either you to reach out to the board or the board to reach out to you to describe. So, it Jen, it. Yes. Let, let me suggest, Aaron, that you uh, can you communicate with Robin, who is probably watching. And ask her if she would. I, I I think you could probably hear the jets right now. Uh, but if you don't mind, Aaron, communicating with Robin and sending her a Zoom, and she may want to join us uh, for a little bit of discussion after we've gone through the bill. Okay. And Nolan, you have your hand up. Yeah. Um, as someone who recently had to go through a DUI process to get v data. Not DUI, big DUA, perhaps. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> no one. <laughs> Can we go back and fix the record? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, as someone who just uh, beat a DUI, no, um, just went through a DUA, I will say that the board was very, very, very rigorous. It was we, That's we, a DUA. Yeah. Data use agreement. Data use agreement to, to be able to have Joshua Slens group use data. We had it took us almost two weeks to to negotiate the DUA and to fill out all the paperwork that they needed. So I would I can vouch for the how rigorous and protective the, the board has been and is on their data. Okay. Thank you. Good luck with that ticket. <laughs> <laughs> 
And no good lawyers? <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, why don't we go ahead? I'm going to mute myself when the plane goes over. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, so section, what is now section six, is the blueprint, this language itself has not changed. It's adding to the blueprint specifically uh, an initiative on the use of quality improvement facilitators and other means to support quality improvement activities, including using clinical and claims data to evaluate patient outcomes and promoting best practices regarding patient referrals and care distribution between primary and specialty care. Section seven, what's now seven is um, the- Just, just to, I know Patrick Flood sent something on blueprint. Do you wanna go through it now or hold I later? The, I think it's the next section. Okay, yep, okay. Because of the way things moved. So yes, I was tracking that. I think it's this, this section we're about to start. So it is now section seven, um, blueprint community health teams and quality improvement facilitators. This would continue to require by September 1st, the director of healthcare reform in the agency of human services to recommend to the health reform oversight committee, the amounts by which health insurers and Medicaid should increase the amount of the per person per month payments they make toward the shared costs of operating the blueprint community health teams and quality improvement facilitators with a goal of increasing each plans or payer spending on primary care until primary care comprises at least 12% of the plans or payers overall annual health care spending using the calculations determined by the board in accordance with the 2019 act. This language here in blue was suggested by the Vermont Medical Society, and it would say such increases shall be reflected in health insurers plan year 24 rate 2024 rate filings if the increases cannot be implemented in a rate neutral manner. It would require the agency also to provide an estimate of the state funding that would be needed to support the increase for Medicaid, both with and without federal financial participation. And then Patrick Flood recommends adding funding for the blueprint shall be sufficient to cover the actual costs of primary care practices implementing these provisions. That'll give heart palpitations to appropriations. I sure will, but you know what? It's important. It's a it's an important statement to be made. But we're losing primary care practices. I I understand. How, how, I've been raised. <laughs> well, yeah, I get it. We'll come, I'm sure we'll come back to it, Senator. <laughs> do my job. Yeah, it's a good job. I gotta mute myself, Jen. I'll let you go ahead. Um, I don't know if it's like Poland. What do they do with still flying over her house? Isn't there a lot of them? It's summer still. The only the only thing I can say is it's. I'm glad it's not three o'clock in the morning as it was a bit ago. I thought those planes went to Poland. What are they? They went to Germany, and I guess I don't know where they are now. Yeah, they were from Utah. Uh, they were still here. I thought ours went. Europe, ours so. are right over my head. Over your head? Okay. Yeah. There we go. Let's hope they're ours that are over your head. Oh. Um, where are we? I'm raising my hand too. Um, <laughs> it's confusing. Um, and you can't use the little yellow one. Yeah, exactly. Both hands. Um, I still remain just a little uncomfortable with this 12% number. I, I know it was in some study in Rhode Island, and I know that we have repeated it in our work here, but it's not based on Vermont, and it seems pretty arbitrary. Um, I'm, uh, page 13, um, line eight. It's not, not in blue. It's, yeah, it's the, it was already there, and I've mentioned this a couple times. I just don't like using date it, like numbers that are not based on anything. Yeah, I, I, you know, spending on primary care until primary care comprises at least twelve percent. Well, just spending money on primary care doesn't mean we're doing more or better primary care. It might just mean that everybody's raising their rates. I mean, I 
Well, and it also yes. depends on what codes you include. And some people include different codes. And and so, but, so, but, but we're also talking about value-based payment. So we're getting away from fee for service will be eliminating a lot of codes or bundling them together the way the blueprint does. So I, you know, there has to be a way that we, that we put money into primary care. One of the problems is that as primary care is prevention, it's the upstream activity and it is lower reimbursement and lower payment and people are having to put out of pocket and uh, other expenses. So we're trying to offset that. If we raised our repayment rate in Medicaid, it would go a long way. I, 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 get, I get that, um, Senator Lyons, and I want to do that. I just don't think that naming this random or semi-random, uh, I know it was based oh. on something, percentage <laughs> based. Will, will do it. And I think that you know there's a lot of ways you can you know, make the data get to 12% without actually increasing spending um, on primary care. And okay, so let's, uh, that, uh, I think. Right, that, you had asked that question yeah. yesterday. How far away from 12% are we in the state? Yeah, what are well, we? it depends. As we heard in testimony, it depends on the payer. So one payer might be 15% and another one might be eight or 9%. So trying to, get everyone at a level that will ensure some sustainability of prim for primary care. So what I'm gonna suggest is we also have Patrick Flood's language and let's uh, go through, let's complete, uh, complete going through the bill. We'll flag this one because I know it's been something of concern. And then uh, we've invited Robin to come in and others who worked on the language to be here with us. So if they come in during this meeting, we'll be able to get their thoughts as well. Okay. All right. So Aaron, and just to, just to Aaron, I, I did send the email out that the folks who wanted to be on Zoom and it's perfectly fine to invite them in. They can sit and listen with us and then we can call on the on them as needed. Okay. Robin is here. You want me to let her in? Sure. And we'll we'll call on her at some point to go through some of the questions that we have. So do you want to continue walking through the bill for now? Let's keep going. Yes, Jen, please. Okay. Um, so the next section is the moderate need supports. And um, this would continue to require Dale to convene a working group with representatives of older Vermonters, other community-based service providers, the Office of the Long-Term Care Ombudsman, the Agency of Human Services, and other interested stakeholders to consider extending access to long-term home and community-based services and supports to a broader cohort uh, of Vermonters who would benefit from them and their family caregivers, including the types of services. And I don't know, I've not made any changes since yesterday. I don't know if you want me to go through all of the language here. No, I, I think unless somebody has a question, okay. we've been through it a couple of times. Hit the category. So they would be looking at uh, the types of services that many Vermonters need, older Vermonters need, but may not be eligible for or aren't covered most promising opportunities to extend those supports, how to set the criteria for the extended supports, how to fund the extended supports, how to proactively identify Vermonters who are at the greatest need for these supports, how best to support family caregivers, and the feasibility of extending this access and the impact on existing services. It, uh, and then Patrick Flood recommends adding a new subsection B here, that would say that the working group shall make recommendations for changes to service delivery for persons duly eligible for Medicaid and Medicare to improve care, expand options, and reduce unnecessary cost shifting and duplication, and shall request from CMS any necessary waivers to implement the proposed changes. I'm not sure I would put it there, but anyway. Uh, and then um, your existing subsection B says that the department 
must co uh, collaborate with others in AHS as needed to incorporate the working group's recommendations into the agency proposals and negotiations with CMS for the iteration of Vermont's global commitment demonstration that will take effect following the expiration of the demonstration currently under negotiation. It doesn't look quite as bad without all the strikes. <laughs> so, yeah, so is there any... <laughs> Somebody wants to give us a clearer time frame. We often negotiate one that lasts a set number of years, but then there's options to extend or we end up extending. So putting a date certain in seems a little um, yes dangerous. Um, question here: Does anyone disagree with adding the uh, dual the dual folks, Medicare Medicaid folks? recommended by Patrick Flood. I think that makes a lot of sense. Do you have the language? I don't know if, you, if you're, um, you have it, okay. Um, so you, I, you know, I think there's there's a lot embedded in this one sentence uh, because it not only <laughs> requires them to make recommendations, but also to request any necessary waivers to from CMS to implement the proposed changes. Um, you yeah, know, and you may want to hear about them before they proceed. Exactly. I, yeah, I agree. We should take that out. And there is already a thing about that reporting back to us, right? Yes. Yes. That's yeah. the next piece. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, let's see. All right. So so I will put add Patrick's dual. the dual eligibles, but taking out the right. going ahead. Make the recommendations first and then yep. add to report. All right. So I will make the changes. I'll I'll add in this concept of looking at the duals issues um but not the reference to pursuing waivers i will add a reference to them in the report as well so they'll look at them and they'll talk about them in their report all right almost to the end here sec what is now section nine is the green mountain care board reports on the requirement that they summarize and synthesize the key findings and recommendations from reports prepared by and for the board and that all reports and summaries prepared by the board must be available to and understandable by. So I want to revisit this because I know there's some questions about that, the public and post it on the board for a <laughs> Okay, that's great. <laughs> hey, Jenny. Yes. Um, Ian is available if you want her to join as well. Oh, yes, please. I have her join. Aaron, did, is, does Ina have the Zoom? I already said the tour. Okay, good. That's good. And when they, when, when Ina comes in, uh, please put her in, right in the room with us. Okay. And uh, because this will help, uh, we can get into a more of a conversation mode. The, the question I have is we have language from Patrick Flood. Jen, maybe uh, at this point, could we go through that language? We've got then, much, but I missed one. Which one? Not, I missed one piece of it because it was not in uh, section order. <laughs> so I didn't notice it until we're after, after we're okay. um, So the other piece of language from Patrick Flood is uh, would be in section two. And he recommends adding a new subsection C. I don't know if we put it somewhere if you wanted to. Um, that would direct the Agency of Human Services to identify the funding necessary for, so this is in the delivery system transformation, I'll pause there. Uh, this is in the delivery system transformation community engagement process. Um, this would direct, so, so far the money is all going to the agency of, I mean, sorry, to the Green Mountain Care Board in, uh, to do this work in consultation with the Director of Healthcare Reform and the Agency of Human Services. I'm not sure this is exactly the spot for it, um, but he, his language would direct the Agency of Human Services to identify the funding necessary for community agencies to effectively implement the redesign, there's the redesign here, and provide the proper level of services to consumers. Community agencies shall include at a minimum federally qualified health centers, designated agencies, home health agencies, area agencies on aging, adult day providers, residential care homes, nursing homes, homelessness service providers, and CAC agencies. So, Ina um, is, is, will be here. And uh, then I, I think we should hear from Ina and also Robin. 
This may have been discussed yesterday with the group, but I know that AHS will have something to say about this. It, it, does, it does provide for some discussion of continuity of care between and among our, our various types of provider types. So uh, I think it's an important uh, issue to address in some way, at least a conversation at this point. Go ahead, Ruth. Senator Hardy. Um, thanks. I'm wondering, I, I don't disagree with this language, but I'm wondering if it, do you know, Jen, if this is similar to what's in S1 or H153? No. No, that's really looking at increasing their Medicaid payment rates right. and creating a methodology for, yeah. you know, for, for ongoing uh, inflationary indexing. Oh, okay. This is about redesign. I see. This is about redesign and what it would cost to implement the redesign. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, think care management, think uh, referrals, think keeping people uh, from uh, acute care, moving into chronic care um, and how that happens in a seamless way. That's kind of the way I've been thinking about it. I, I, know, I don't know the extent to which we need to have a total and complete analysis of every little detail that's there, but rather how do we move people from one care type to another? So from the hospital acute setting into a long-term care facility with uh, supports they need or into a, a place for ongoing counseling, some of those issues. Senator Cummings, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just wondering if that's what he's asking yes. or if he's asking us because we've sat in this room and we've done health care reform before and then the total cost of that comes in and sticker shock sets in mm -hmm. and it dies and I'm wondering, you know, while we're going through this, I think he's saying and we need to be cognizant of what what it would cost to do it because i keep telling people that are emailing me about health care reform you know and other countries have done it please remember those other countries pay a tax rate about 50 percent it's yeah. not you know it's it's not that you're going to get more and pay less necessarily it will just be more fairly distributed. Yeah, I, yeah. This this it, is the rock and the hard place. Yeah, absolutely. It's expensive. Yeah. We should all die earlier. It would be cheap. <laughs> oh no! Don't do that. We're we're gonna get out of the I, pandemic. I don't, I, I don't like that solution <laughs> anymore. Long dies fast. <laughs> so I think it may also be that going at if the if the sort of goal that or the one. effect of the. Um, Trans delivery tr system transformation is to move more care into the communities, looking at whether the community settings are are well placed to be able to provide additional services to more Vermonters who will be coming in that in that door. It's nice to say we're going to do it. We need to make sure they're right. funded. Right, which I think is, is kind of the idea that you had in the, or, or that was conveyed to you in the moderate youth group expansion is, you know, we, we can't expand the services that we provide to older Vermonters if we don't have the workforce available to do it. So I wonder if, if, if we added this, I'm just trying to think I make sure I understand what he's asked for. The, identify the funding and capacity because it's not just about funding it's also workforce it's yeah. about facilities right, it's about, right. and it may be so. i mean i think it may be helpful if, if patrick is watching to um to have him clarify what he is proposing maybe not in legislative language but in just a description and then also to see what it is that you all want to do with yeah. the language I mean, you, yeah regardless of what he's proposing you may decide you what you want to find out about this is about capacity and workforce as well and FQHCs, are, do we even have any oversight of, over them? Uh, I think they um, would want to be participating in this. They, they participate in a lot. They, I think, voluntarily participate in a lot of the reform activities. Yeah. Um, but I think, again, some of this might, I think they may be concerned about what may be coming their, 
way as far as um, as demand for services if more care is transitioned to the community setting. Let's uh, let me ask this question. I have two questions. Uh, one, Aaron, I just sent you Ina's language, and I don't remember whether I already sent it to you or not for the chair with the committee to print out for the committee. Uh, yeah, do you have Ina's? Yes. Okay, I've sent it twice. Then does it begin with the sum of six hundred thousand? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You have it then. Um, so then, my other question, my other suggestion is that that maybe we could ask Robin uh, to um, join us, and we can have a uh, ask questions of Robin. Thank you for being here. And yes, yes, I think that was on passage, same name changes yesterday. Now we're here. Okay, so what the, the Ena language this is new language to what we currently have in front of us. And Robin, have you seen that? I have seen it, thank you. Okay, all right, good. And then, so I'm I'm interested then, um, Jen, we've identified some places where we have questions for Robin. I think you've also been listening in. So we, we'd like to get a sense of the, what the group was thinking, and then why don't you give us your thoughts at this point after hearing our uh, discussion? Sure, um, thank you, uh, Robin Lunge. I am a member of the Green Mountain Care Board. Uh, so the group yesterday that met, um, you've, Jen has walked through the, the suggestions. I think what we were trying to do is work towards some uh, common ground around um, issues that various people uh, raised. One area, and I certainly don't want to speak for Ina, but I will say that one area that did come up that was of interest of the community providers was having this new section around broader reform um, that AHS is leading to be clear about the role of community providers. I think, uh, and again, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but based on the discussion, my takeaway was that there was some concern about having the language embedded in uh, the Green Mountain Care Board sections, you know, because we typically don't regulate those providers. Um, and so I think this general concept of adding this new section was um, supported generally. I, to, I don't know that people have necessarily seen the language. So, um, you know, th there may be language issues. I don't know that. So, so here's my suggestion. I think before you uh, continue, unless you were going to uh, I would, I think, let's have Jen go through the language with us that Ina has sent so that we can get a sense of where it would be. And then obviously the question that we have had, we've had is about the $500,000 for HIE and then the $600,000 that's here and the distinction between those two. So Jen, why don't we go through uh, Ina's language and then we'll get to the funding piece. Great. And can I just clarify, and Robin, I don't know if you know the answer to this. Is this would this potentially go in instead of the section three that is in the bill, the six hundred thousand? Um, I would, I would, I, I think that's Zena's proposal. But again, I don't want to speak for her. Um, what I included in section three was the existing appropriation. Um, to the board and the reporting associated with that from the underlying amendment. And we, um, I do want to be clear, the board does feel that it needs uh, those dollars to support its part of the work in the all pair model agreement. Um, as an independent board, we need to make sure that we have our own resources separate from the administration um, and can appropriately participate given our role as the regulator um, and, you know, we have been very clear that we uh, welcome AHS's leadership in healthcare reform. Um, I don't know their resource situation, so I don't want to speak to that. Um, but I'm not, so I'm not sure exactly what Ina was intending. I, but my impression was that it would be a substitute. Thank you. Sorry to put you on For five. section three. Oh, okay. For section three, yes. Okay. Okay. So let's briefly look at section three. So the existing section three is that language on okay. six that would appropriate 600,000 for the board and 
the director of health care reform to develop design and develop a proposed agreement with CMMI uh, to include Medicare and Vermont's payment reform and delivery system transformation initiatives. Okay, and then keep keep going, go right through. So you want me to do Ina's proposal or? Yes, please. Yes, please. Ina's proposal, instead, I think instead, would be to appropriate 600,000 to the Agency of Human Services in FY23 to support the Director of Healthcare Reform in consultation with the Green Mountain Care Board to develop and design a proposal for a subsequent agreement with Medicare for Medicare's continued participation in multi-payer value-based payment models in Vermont. The proposal will be informed by the community and provider process, which I assume is the process in section two, we should confirm, to reduce inefficiencies, lower costs, improve population health outcomes, and increase access to essential services. Maybe it's sections one and two. The design and development of a proposal shall include consideration of alternative payment and delivery system approaches for hospital services and community-based providers, such as primary care, mental health, substance use disorder services, skilled nursing facilities, home health care, and long-term services and supports. It says, at a minimum, the alternative payment models explored shall include global payments for hospitals, geographically or regionally based global budgets for healthcare services, existing federal value-based payment models and broader total cost of care and risk sharing models to address patient migration patterns across systems of care. The alternative payment and total cost of care models shall include appropriate mechanisms to convert fee for service reimbursements to predictable payments for multiple categories of healthcare providers as specified above. Not sure what that's specific they're referring to. The models shall also include a process to ensure reasonable and adequate rates of payment and a reasonable and predictable schedule for rate updates. Any potential models must also meaningfully impact health equity and address inequities in terms of access, quality, and health outcomes. Okay, so thank you. That's great. Um, I, I agree with you about that as specified above. Maybe that comes. <laughs> um, so Ina is here. Ina, do you want to say a couple of words about this uh, language that you shared with us? Yes, happy to. Thank you, Ina Beckus, Director of Healthcare Reform at the Agency of Human Services. Uh, we did um, work on this language uh, in to uh, propose to the committee um, related to our testimony as we shared yesterday, where we feel that um, if we are looking towards potential uh, future agreements with our federal partners, and certainly if we are carrying forward um, our healthcare reform objectives, um, which are are to be inclusive of, of the healthcare continuum that we need to be considering uh, total cost of care models, um, certainly in companion with other models that are considered um, as we explore and develop a next, uh, a next potential, um, uh, a proposal, excuse me, for a next potential agreement with Medicare. We want, I think it's a principle that we share that we all want to see Medicare continue to participate in alternative payment models in Vermont, um, consistent in a multi-payer model. And to do that, we need to um, go forward with a proposal to CMMI for how Medicare would um, be participating in the state specifically. Okay, thank you. And so the, the question I have then, uh, uh, we're, we're hearing all of this, and then we're seeing a $600,000 um, sort of appropriation, and then later on we're seeing $500,000. Can we talk about that distribution a little bit? And I would like to hear, you know, both from Ina and Robin on this, uh, because the I think the $500,000 goes back to Section A. Um, can we just talk about what funds are required for the work that is in the bill as proposed right now? So 
So who are you? Holding? I guess I'm not clear. I mean, I can show you where the money is in the bill. And you yeah, can let's do that. Level. Okay. Um, so there is 1.4 million in section one for the Green Mountain Care Board for the value-based payments designed for hospitals. There is 2.5 million in section two to the board for the delivery system transformation, both the community engagement consultants and the health system design consultants. And there is 600,000 in, in both in section three in the bill right now, just in the draft we've been looking at to support the board and the director of healthcare reform in this proposed agreement with CMMI and also Ina has the proposed, I think the same 600,000 to the Agency of Human Services uh, to uh, support the director in consultation with the board to develop a proposal with the, uh, basically with CMMI. And then there is 500,000 in section four to the Agency of Human Services for the Health Information Exchange Steering Committee work on creating one health record for each person. Okay, let's, uh, I think, uh, Ina, Nolan may have reached out to you about the cost of doing the work on the HIE uh, previously, and it would be helpful to us to know uh, the, the work that's there is really continuation of the Steering com Committee work and then planning. And so the question is, it doesn't look like there's anything different from what would be in the current budget for the steering committee. So the, what, how is the $500,000 going to facilitate that work that's currently going on? Thank you for the question. Um, it is and does build on the work that the steering committee has laid out. Um, as you saw, or as you can read in the language, um, we're looking uh, to inform the 2023 strategic plan with uh, you know, a specific uh, task in terms of the integration of the claims and clinical data and a data strategy to support that very specifically. Uh, we do have work um, that has been and will be initiated uh, to support a data strategy for the next HIE plan update. But with regard to this particular project, I think that the scope um, would be expanded for that work. And we would, we would like to see some resources to focus very specifically on that task related to uh, V cures and the HIE. So the question is, because the $500,000, to be quite honest, was like a placeholder that I suggested to Jen a long time ago, but we don't have any backup information to demonstrate what the actual need is from your perspective. Yes, and I, as I was communicating a little bit offline with, with Nolan, I was working uh, with my team to get a little bit more information there. Um, okay. as, as we, um, you know, we certainly contemplate a, a piece of this work, but we would be accelerating it um, with this planning process. Okay, so it would be helpful for you, I think, to continue to work with Nolan and get us a, a more concrete estimate of what's needed there that would help so then we'll then we'll set that one aside for now and then move back to the language that you have and with the recommendation that AHS take the lead in consultation with Green Mountain Care Board and we hear exactly the opposite from the Green Mountain Care Board so uh, there there need I know that in the past you folks have worked collaboratively on this so is it just is it a matter of language here and uh, who's, I, I'm just trying to sort out how we can resolve the differences because I think it's really what, what's in the language in terms of uh, including community resources and services is uh, going to be critical in the design and transformation process. So what is it here that we can, how can we 
build some language that will satisfy all of us. Thank you. Um, so I will just speak to the board's piece, which is, um, as you know, as part of the hospital sustainability work, uh, we included an estimate of the funding that we believe the board would need to support uh, including that type of work in the all pair model agreement. Um, as you know, the prior agreement, what it's co-signed by the governor's office, the governor himself, in fact, uh, the AHS secretary and the chair of the board. Uh, as an independent body, it, the board's it, regulatory role in the all pair model is currently um, setting the Medicare ACO rate and uh, we are the entity that provides total cost of care and quality reporting to the federal government under the current agreement. So I would, depending on how the new model evolves, um, our role, we think, will continue in terms of hospital regulation, that that will be a piece of it um, in the hospital space. And at, since we have the staffing expertise currently on statewide total cost of care, um, I think we we wanted to make sure that we had resources to support um, proposals for the next agreement around those areas that are currently in our wheelhouse. So, um, you know, we'll, when we did that estimate, we did it for uh, the work that we were anticipating would need to be done in, as parallel work to the hospital sustainability. So we do feel that um, and. Absolutely, we need to work together. We do work together. We work together actually quite well. Um, I do think though the board is an independent board and we do need resources to support our part of the partnership um, because we're gonna have to vote on it in public after a public discussion. So, um, you know, certainly that doesn't diminish necessarily AHS's need for additional funding and we would, if they need additional funding, I certainly they should speak to that. And and we wouldn't, we wouldn't, we were not, we're un, we're supportive of that. But I think that doesn't diminish our separate independent need for resources. So the question I have of you is, as we're looking at the language that Ina has brought to us, and just simply. Um, it, it just move down to the second and third paragraphs. Uh, that is, is it the intent of the board to also to include this uh, evaluation and this inform work within the within the um, appropriation that's in the bill? So we had not uh, the six hundred thousand that we included. We were looking at the work we thought we would need to do. So, uh, I'm not but no, the the question is, yeah, does that include? the regionally based global budgets for healthcare services, existing federal value-based payment models and broader total cost of care, risk sharing models to address patient migration patterns, et cetera, et cetera. And then in the, in the previous paragraph, the, the alternative payment and delivery approaches for hospital and community-based providers, such as primary care, mental health, so on and so forth. It's Is certainly be it would be inclusive of some, but not all of this work. So for example, uh, alternative payment and delivery system, uh, system approaches for hospitals is in our wheelhouse. Uh, we currently do the total cost of care uh, reporting to the federal government, as well as the quality reporting. In the prior agreement, the board brought stakeholders together on the quality um, framework. And uh, we currently look at risk sharing models uh, in the ACO program as part of our regulatory process. So I think we would need to work out with AHS the work plan of exactly who was doing what. Um, I do think some of what's included in the language is in our wheelhouse, and I think some of it is not. Some of that is squarely AHS's uh, expertise. And, and that's exactly, I think, what AHS is saying here and uh, so for us, I think there is a compelling reason to move forward on the evaluation and the work that AHS has presented. I think it's something that we care about in our committee. So to, for full integration uh, for a consistent system of care. So, so how can we, how can Jen 
modify the language so that we so that the work is getting done uh, in a collaborative fashion. So that I think that's the issue. And then the funding piece, of course, is key. I know that that Green Mountain Care has presented one one proposal to us. We've sure. also looked at other consultant reports and we've heard from AHS and each of those are critically important in the decision-making process. So I'm pushing back a little here because I think we'd like to, we'd like to move forward uh, with the work that is suggested here. So I'll right, listen, so uh, listen to Robin and then I see you, Senator Hardy, thank you. Sure. So I think what I would do is I would separate out the appropriation from the work so that uh, you can have collaborative language um, directing the parties to work together collaboratively on the work. And then the committee will have to decide who gets how much money for each of us separately to support that work. Okay. So that would be my drafting recommendation or suggestion. I'm happy to think more about it or work with Jen on coming up with other ideas if that okay. doesn't work. Okay, that's helpful. Senator Hartley, let's go to Sheila Livingston and then we'll come back. Hello everyone, Sheila Livingston, Policy Director for the Agency of Human Services for the record. Thanks for letting me hop on. Um, I, I hear Robin's point, Senator, um, but I think that it is really important when we're talking about policy and work and input there is not, I don't believe there's a way to separate out the money in this case because that is that is what's going to fund what actually happens. Um, so I just, I want to just put that out there. It's an uncomfortable truth. It's the truth. Um, and then just the question of, you know, collaboration, the, the Green Mountain Care Board is asking for a substantial sum of money to do a lot of this work um, for hospitals specifically, and this piece is much broader. And I agree with Robin that we work with them very well. And I don't know um, that I feel sort of the, I, I hear that you need to vote on, that the board needs to vote on it publicly. I, I can understand that, but I think that the work that needs to be done is this evaluation and that that information can then be presented to the board by AHS and we can take their input and work with them on the design again collaboratively. And since they are getting the vast majority of the funds in this bill to do work specific to global hospital payments, and we will work with them on that while, while they direct that funding. I'm, I'm a little confused with how that doesn't then go the other way for this specific part of the bill. And that would be my argument for why AHS would, would receive that fund, funding. Okay, thank you. Um, Senator Hardy. Yeah, I guess, the, uh, my understanding when this 600,000 was first proposed by the Green Mountain Care Board and, and AHS didn't get any of the funding was that AHS already has a budget to do this work, that this is, this is the renegotiation of the agreement with CMMI and that, that um, th it now seems like this proposal that we just got from AHS significantly expands this to be something that's beyond negotiating the agreement with CMMI, which I'm not opposed to, but it seems to have drifted into something different. And, and that's confusing to me. And I also think that the 500,000 for the work that they're already doing for the HIE is excessive. So I'm wondering if we could just take the the 600,000 and the 500,000 that, add them that, together and then split them in half and AHS gets 550,000 to do both of those things and the Green Mountain Care Board gets 550,000 to do the the work on the CMMI cuz I believe there's already funding in the budget for this work for AHS and and Nolan might know more than about it but this proposal came to us as a proposal from the Green Mountain Care Board, and now it seems to have. So, so Senator, you're, you've made some good comments here, and that's why we asked Nolan to work uh, to identify how much money is needed so that maybe some of that can be shifted, a line item shift over to uh, AHS for this other work. Um, that's and not what I, said. This, I know, and the suggestion that you made about splitting it down the middle is um, a good one, something that we, we certainly can consider. 
uh, I'm interested in ensuring that we have language that uh, saw that builds collaboration and addresses the work that is um, in there for our community services because you know as we said this will continue to be an important part of the coordinated system of care so uh, so let's hold let's keep that on the table uh, in terms of splitting the total amount the 1.1 and splitting it in half and we need to know what is through Nolan what's currently in the budget and then what the actual request might be so other questions or comments senator hooker uh, i robin mentioned that there was an overlap in some some of the responsibilities between ahs and the board and i wonder if you know, we could find out what that overlap is so that there's not a duplication of effort when this money is appropriated. Good question. Sure, I can jump in if that would be helpful. Sure. Okay. Um, so the board, the board's current, currently, I would say there's not overlap in the roles. Um, our role is as the regulator of hospitals and uh, accountable care organizations and as uh, the entity that does reporting to the federal government in relationship to the all pair model metrics, which are statewide total cost of care, quality, um, and uh, the scale of the ACO program. So how many people are participating in that? Uh, I think that for the work moving forward, we would necessarily work collaboratively in our spheres uh, to move forward with a proposal to the federal government. Because the board is a public body, uh, no one or two board members can bind the board. So in order for the board to sign on to a proposal, it does need to come through the public meeting process and we would need to take a vote. That does mean that we do need some independent analysis and ability to analyze the proposal that comes before the board. So I don't think it's so much that there's overlap, um, it is collaborative. I do think there's kind of these two pieces that work together um, to make a whole picture. I don't know if that helps, Senator. Yes, thank you. Questions or comments? So we are going to drive for solutions. I think that Senator Hardy has offered one that might be very helpful. Um, Nolan, you just appeared. Yeah, well, my Go name ahead. Is, no, no, just um, I, I, um, I've been reaching out to, I've asked Ina, and I'm going to reach out to HS folks just to find out what they do have in the budget um, specific for the negotiations and how this differs. Um, so I, I don't have an answer right now, but we'll try to get one soon. And I don't know that Ina may not know either at the moment. Uh, if she does, I'll let her weigh in. Uh, I just didn't want to go around her. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, and the, the, the thing is that as I look at this in the context of healthcare um, system design and transformation, there there are certainly can be additional costs associated with the work that has to be done. So I don't want to diminish the need for funding for the work that AHS May, may have to do, would have to do. So, uh, I think that is still important. And I think uh, we'll keep that money there at some of it somehow. Go ahead, uh, Senator we, Hardy. Can we, I'm sorry, can we let Ina weigh in? I think she was trying to answer the question. Okay, I didn't see a hand, but go ahead. Yep. I, I, um, into, you know, I, so, AHS um, does have um, contract support at this time with um, some planning around the all payer agreement. Um, that contract supporting is also relative to our 1115 waiver. And as you know, the 1115 waiver does need to work in companion to a um, all payer agreement. Um, but I wanted to echo and reiterate the comments around the collaboration that is necessary to 
move towards a proposal for a next agreement. Um, there are three signatories on that agreement with the uh, governor, the secretary of the agency, and the chair of the Green Mountain Care Board, each being one. And we do have particular roles um, in um, the work that happens and the design and um, proposals that go forward. I think it's really, the, as the director of healthcare reform, I think that there is a particular role in terms of those of the innovation, um, the the design, and the board has its role, as Robin described, in terms of regulating and and uh, regulating in any future agreement as well. Um, but that is uh, that is different than where the director of healthcare reform has a particular role in, in envisioning and supporting the work um, to move towards a collective vision for a future proposal. I think that that's where the innovation and design work may fall more with the, with the director of healthcare reform in that position um, and the agency of human services as well. Again, we have to work with, and we do work very regularly and well together. Um, and, but I think when we uh, are looking at the bill and wanting to be sure certainly that the hospital global payments are accompanied by some overarching um, payment and delivery system reform design uh, that we, we need we need additional funds to be sure that we are um, looking at a model, looking at hospital global payments among other strategies and being sure that we have um, a design that envelops those potential hospital global payments in some other frameworks that would it really encourage and, and maintain um, the innovation that we we do see with providers uh, working across the continuum. Senator Hardy, go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, just I'm trying to look at the, the sort of package of the bill just in general. And the first section is hospital global, global payments or value-based payments. So that funding goes to Green Mountain Care Board because that's kind of their bailiwick, right? So then the second section is the healthcare system transformation. The way it is right now, the 2.5 would go to the Green Mountain Care Board, but it sounds like some of the things that Ina is proposing in this new section actually go in this section, that it's about healthcare system transformation and that, that it's not about the re negotiation of the current agreement. It's about bigger picture, longer term transformation. So I'm wondering um, about sort of that section and how it's relevant. And then the next section is the 600,000 for the renegotiation, the Green Mountain Care Board's portion of the renegotiation which is really about renegotiating the, the next agreement, not about, not about as broad a system transformation necessarily right now. And then the next section is the $500,000 for the HIE, for the technology stuff. And that seems like that's work that AHS is doing. So, it, and I understand that there needs to be collaboration on the agreement part of it, but I, I think that there's sort of this uh, uh, blurring of the lines here in a way that is not, that is uh, getting confusing or is unhelpful. And I just um, wonder, I mean, what we've heard clearly from the Green Mountain Care Board is they need their own separate funding in order to be at the table for the, the negotiation portion of that. And what I've heard from Ina is that she, she needs to be at the table for, for the healthcare reform transformation process and the, the renegotiation, but that 
AHS already has some kind of funding stream for that. So I'm wondering if, if really some of the stuff that that's being proposed in this new section X, Ina, that you sent us really belongs in section two. And if there's, there's a way to look at that sort of mix of funding there and divvy it up a little bit more. I, I, I don't know. I'm just, but I, I'm hearing it like- but the Senator, this is a, these are good questions to ask. And why don't we give Ina a minute to, to respond? I do agree that there is some blurring of the lines because there there is overlap of these different activities. Um, and so I think that is causing confusion. The different activities, each of them have a piece that do inform the proposal for a next potential agreement. And I really am talking about the work that needs to happen to inform the proposal for the next agreement and to be sure that we have a framework that is maintaining uh, total cost of care, accountability structure, and for instance, and that we have the opportunity to explore um, the uh, uh, various alternative payment models that could best promote integration uh, across the service continuum. And the you know, total cost of care today in, in our current agreement is not exclusive to hospital services. It is broader already today, and it includes services delivered um, and paid for in settings that are not hospitals. And so that's why it's very important that we continue and look to a, a, a future potential Medicare proposal that's also building on that and is working from that current inclusion of hospital and non-hospital services in our payment reform models. So my our, our interest is really in informing that next agreement through the process that we proposed in the language um, and bringing that forward into a proposal. And that language does acknowledge that the community-based process that the board has proposed uh, will have also information that comes from it that I believe will inform a proposal as well. And I, I think that that is the board's thinking also in that regard. I don't, they should, Robin should, should agree or disagree. But so I, I do, I don't think that what I've, the language we put forward is about the community-based process. It's, it's about the process of information gathering and exploration that drives a, a proposal for a future agreement with Medicare. Okay, this is very helpful and uh, good question, Senator Hardy. This is very helpful to us. I think, um, so this is what I'm thinking. We can, we can dialogue this through, but I'm gonna suggest, uh, Jen, do you have enough information that might help us uh, and you work with uh, Ina and Robin to put together um, some language and what is it that you might, what is it that you're thinking at this point? And I know that we're gonna to have to make some decisions on this, but just what is it that Jen, you're thinking? What I'm thinking is that I don't know that I can draft it. I mean, if you're looking for me to draft some consensus version that comes from Ina and Robin, I can try if they're able to. Not here yet. I think, but I, I think otherwise it's really up to the committee to decide where you want to go okay. with the various proposals we've heard. Yes, I completely agree. The, the, uh, the issue is for us is that Green Mountain Care Board has put together its proposal. We have heard from consultants. We have heard from AHS. So it isn't one. It's, it's trying to bring these things together so that moving forward, the transformation includes both after hospital global budgeting is analyzed and done, we also have an opportunity for transformation that is included within the budgeting. And in that, in that area, in the transformation area, there are significant concerns within AHS. And then that we have also heard from our consultants making recommendations 
that we uh, could include and should include our uh, community services. So uh, that that's where I think we are at this point. So uh, Shayla, go ahead. Um, thank you again. Yeah, no, I don't want to repeat what you just said. Is it was basically to make that point. I think that we do have some funding. I want to be clear: the committee and the BAA for work to to work on both the eleven fifteen waiver negotiations and the APM. It is less than the six hundred thousand, which is only a fraction of what that total budget the Green Mountain Care Board is requesting. I'm not trying to be difficult here with with Robin. I respect that they did their budgeting process. None of this is in the governor's budget regardless. Um, and the work that the Green Mountain Care Board will be doing will impact the amount of work that AHS has to do. Because when we see these this type of reform happen in the hospital system, exactly what you're saying, Senator Lyons, it affects all the services in the community. And so with that change, we also need to do this, this work again in collaboration with them. Um, and I think, Senator Hardy, to your point, the question is, where does the committee want to see that work done? Um, and, and how is it is it led? And once more, we work together very well, but there is something about funding and who controls that that is important. There we have it. Go okay. ahead. This is a conversation discussion time and we're trying to get to some understanding of where we'd like to be. So go ahead. Yeah. So I'm a budget person, and, and so this is really frustrating to me because what we've all we've just had these sort of big numbers kind of thrown around into various categories, and we've never seen a budget. So I know we're not the appropriations committee, but we're talking about the budget. So the, the two options are we either get a budget from both AHS and the Green Mountain Care Board, like a real budget, not I mean uh, the Green Mountain Care Board forces hospitals to do this, so I want them to do this if we're going to talk about their money. And same with AHS, come to us with a budget. So that's one option we could do. Or we could just put the language in, say there's $5 million and send it down the hall and have appropriations do this for them. Because I think we, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not hearing any good justifications for the numbers right now. I'm just saying, we need, I'm just hearing we need money, which obviously, I know you need money to do this work, but there's no detail on why you need, you know, 500,000 or 600,000 or 1.4 million or 2.5 million. So that's, I, I, I like, I like the details if we're going to make this decision, otherwise let's ship it down the hall and have appropriations make this decision. And we just focus on the language. So a good point. I don't think we are making decisions about the, the total money. I think we want to get some kind of a, Differential, differential at this point. Our goal here is to have the policy in place that would allow for AHS and Green Mountain Care Board to do their work uh, independently and collaboratively. So there is money involved in, in that. So the independent work, money's needed. Collaborative work, money's needed. The policy is who's driving the bus. I think the first sentence in the in Enos proposal is kind of the is is the one that is of concern. Who has all the money? So I think what we need to say is that Green Mountain Care Board needs money. AHS needs uh, resources, and they also need something to help the collaborative process. So we, we need to define who's doing the work on what. Um, and, and then Nolan is working with Ina to get a better assessment of the HIE. And perhaps we can get a better assessment of the AHS community service uh, work that has to go on. So I think our job is policy here. Uh, we, we very much care about the transformation piece, and we very much care that as we go forward with um, any changes to our agreement with the federal government, that we are including in that transfer, transformation changes that affect not just hospitals, but also um, community services. So language might 
be different from that first line. So there are there is an appropriation that goes to the Green Mountain Care Board for its work. And there is an appropriation that goes to AHS for its work. And I don't know if we can say there's money that goes to both of them working collaboratively. I don't know what you have done in the past with funding for your CMS um, agreement. Sure, I can speak no, no. to that if you'd like, or I can follow up later. Can I, can I make a comment? I, I'd like Nolan to comment first, Robin, and then, then we'll come back. I think that we're going to go round and round. Oh, yeah. And my suggestion, if you think it's a good idea, would be have Robin and Ina go into a back room and hash out a compromise and then come back with a proposal to the committee so that, because they're the experts. Sounds good to it sounds good to us, I think, for that to happen. I know you've worked hard together on this, but uh, you're hearing you're hearing a level of frustration on the funding piece, and we aren't the appropriations committee, but you're also hearing a level of frustration on the work that's getting done and, and the goals that we have. So Robin, go ahead and then. Sure, happy to do that, of course, and uh, also happy to provide a budget. We have some additional budget materials we had provided to the House Health Care Committee and the House Appropriations Committee about the budget ask. And um, we can send in, resend in Jessica Holmes this testimony, which outlined in detail um, how we were thinking about uh, the, yep. the potential contractual support. That's fine, but I, I do think there is an additional conversation that needs to happen between you and Ina that so we can get to some closure on this. Sure, of course. Happy to do that. Um, so uh, we. What was the other, was there other language? Oh, Jessa Barnard has sent some language in on the section. Is that it? So committee, does this make sense to you The to have Ina and uh, Robin disappear for a little bit? And if, I don't know whether you can do that in the time that we have this morning, but if you can get us something and get it to us, uh, that would be awesome. We have other bills to get to, Madam Chair. I know. We don't worry about us. I'm worried about them right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about us. They can. They need to go. Do so their my question work. is of <laughs> my question of Ina and Robin is: Can you go off right now? You're welcome to come back on Zoom if you find something, but at least to communicate uh, with Jen on some proposal that you might have. Sure, I'm happy to um, give Ina a call. I need to actually, I have an, a, something I need to do at 11 that is uh, difficult for me to change, but I can talk to Ina while I do that. Okay, all right. So we will, we will let you go and uh, we look forward to any uh, agreement that you make. Yeah, <laughs> thank so you. I think that, um, That'd be great. Uh, so let's go to the email that Jessa Barnard sent. And I think Aaron has printed it out for folks. And we can look at that section. Uh, it's also the section that Patrick Flood commented on. Uh, on primary care reimbursement issues. Do you have a gem? Okay. I think it's good. And I do know we will, I think we'll be able to stop pretty soon. We have two other bills to look at, but I'm not really concerned about the the timing on that. We'll be fine. Just to reassure you. I think Jess's language is fine. Yeah, I like it too. Okay, that was easy. It takes out the percentage, but it does. Like yeah, it keeps the it keeps the intent, and it does take out that percentage that's been bothersome. Where does that go, Jen? We have that. You have a spot for that, then. Yeah, I would know what you said. What is now section seven? On okay. Page 13, it would replace some of the language that is 
currently in there and may look for a different way to say a goal of contributing to increasing, but. Yeah. Okay, Thank good. You, Did somebody want to say something? I just said thank you, Jessa. I'm sh I, she's obviously watching. So. She is watching. We've got a. We got a, everyone who's been engaged in this is watching, and it's extremely helpful. Um. So, Jen. Yep. We have sufficient information for. Are there any other areas of question that we haven't looked at? As we went through the bill earlier, I think we've done it. We just have that area of for Green Mountain Care Board and AHS to resolve their differences. Well, did we go through all of Patrick's and decide make decisions? We, we or? did go through all of. Did, what, what did is there any one that we didn't include? I thought we uh, sort of added. In all. We didn't What's make the, decisions on some things yet, Jenny. Uh, Senator Lyons. So you weren't, I don't know that you had made a decision about adding his one D and E. Okay, let's go to that. I Give me a minute. I have to go and find it because I have it on my email. I'm not printing everything out the way you, you are so lucky to have Aaron sitting with you. Okay, so his, which one, Jen? So his on uh, the first page, first mm -hmm. section under global budgets, D and E, um, about, oh, so this is about right. assisting the board yeah. to develop a process for value-based payments, including global payments from all payers to Vermont hospitals that will, and then this would be that will develop options for the design and implementation of a standardized system of fees for hospital inpatient and outpatient oh, yeah. of all pairs. I guess uh, I understand why he's proposing this. And I, I, I'm wondering if it might just take them down a rabbit hole of looking at fees while they're also trying to do global payments. So I would be a little concerned about adding that as, as an additional thing for them to do. Yeah, uh, that's the next step. Except, well, yeah, I agree. you need to know maybe what the fees are when you're talking about global budgets. And if they're all over the place, then how do you determine? Well, but this is the part about where they didn't see they will be taking into consideration the necessary cost of providing services. So they're sort of moving away from historical charges and looking at the necessary cost of providing services. I mean, what if we added in some language to the current C that says something like take into consideration necessary costs of providing services and the differential fees Good. currently charged by hospitals or something like that. So it gets at that they're going to look at what the fees are that are charged, not ignore them, but at them. That, that was the that that's a good point. I mean, the language that we had previously that I think the group has taken out was re related to the Green Mountain Care Board dashboard. Uh, remember, they were do working on the dashboard for hospital. Um, yes, that was in the in the data collection and the yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, we could put that. that. I, I don't know. I'm not sure it's necessary. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure this is necessary. It's a really good idea, but I, I can't imagine that it won't be in the process. So, Ruth, what was your suggestion there? Take into consideration the necessary cost of providing services and the current differential fees. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not quite there yet. But. Well, I guess I'm, I'm trying to understand how that then relates to that and not be based solely on historical charges. Yeah, I think I think the historical charges really fit. Covers it. Yeah, it does. It's covered. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's as long as it's covered, because it is a huge issue. Yeah, I mean, the hospitals are charging all different kinds of fees for the same services, and we don't want to bake that into the new, right. potentially new global payments. So, um, 
and maybe this is necessary. Yeah, no, I think I think let's 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 keep our historical, and we might hear some something further. But um, I maybe agree; it seems like it's covered. Maybe we take out solely because and not be based on historical charges because if you leave the, the word solely in there that yeah assumes that that it will be partially based on them yeah so take out solely and then say necessary class of providing services and not be based on historical well but charges. yeah I mean, here's the here's the issue okay i'm going to uh, uh, forgive me, Senator Hardy, I'm going to the waiting study <laughs> where we have different types of students. We might have different types of hospitals, so, I, you know, so solely might be important to the some of the hospitals. Well, I think that your, your point, and there's a lot of overlap, Jenny. Yes. I've thought about this a lot in terms of both education <laughs> policy and healthcare policy, believe me. Um, so but take into consideration the necessary cost of providing services. So um, uh, that would take into consideration okay. the differences of hospitals and the differences of patients. So if okay. you have a patient in the Northeast Kingdom at the tiny little hospital up there, that would be a more expensive place, just like it's a more expensive place to serve children in schools. Gotcha. Um, Okay, I'm I'm with you. More expensive is probably okay. This is good. So Jen, we'll take that out then. That's solely out. We'll see what kind of response we get if we get a response on that one word. Yeah. Unless anybody else is concerned about it. I mean, okay. 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 Yeah. okay. What else have you got? What that? What else was there? That so then the second one uh, in that section that he proposed is um, that these that the process for establishing and distributing global payments from all payers to Vermont hospitals that will and then determine how best to secure comprehensive data and analytical services from hospital financial analysts oh. to evaluate hospital fees, revenue sources, and financial and operating reporting and metrics. If you like the idea, I wouldn't put it where he's suggesting it because I don't think it follows developing a process for establishing and distributing global payments that that will determine how best to secure this data. If it doesn't, doesn't where would you put that? Where would that go? I think I would put it as a standalone, uh, as a standalone requirement. So okay. Put it as like a maybe a. But I think this is already is it, can I ask? I think this is already done by Green Mountain Care Board. That's what I was just going to ask. I mean, isn't this already uh, part of the Green Mountain Care Board authority and work? Yeah. I would. Yes, they, this is exactly what they do. They look at data on the services and they have financial analysts. They look at fees, revenue, financial and operating reporting and metrics. They do all this. But is there something to be said for how best to secure the comprehensive data? Because there's been question about uh, transparency in some sectors that may be an issue, maybe. Oh. I think all of the Green Mountain Care Board stuff is all public. of the reports are, is pub, are public. But how it's do public. they get the information? From hospitals. From hospitals and other organizations that may or may not i mean i guess i'm just no they get it directly from hospitals during the, the hospital budget review yeah and they don't yeah and they don't it's have authority like to yes it's just hospitals yeah hello <laughs> Sorry. They don't, they don't have a, i just i just wanted to insert they don't have authority over some places like uh our da's Okay, so this is just hospitals, just to make yeah. sure the data is available to them so that, you know, it's easy. I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know. Uh, unless we hear differently, this we can consider already a part of what the Green Mountain Care Board is capable of looking okay. at. So, so not those. And it, okay, so then his next proposal is around Blueprint that I think Jessa has incorporated into her 
yeah. on Blueprint. Um, you wanted to add something about the funding for community providers, but I'm not sure. It doesn't really fit under the appropriation to the full one. We could just put it as an, as an E if you wanted to. Um, well, if it's for transformation, it's probably important, but this is something we will consider as we're going through um, our budget process with the Appropriations Committee. But this is more, this is for redesign and future looking. Is this right. included in, is this included in Ina's language that we were just looking at, do you think? Uh, I don't, uh, well, I mean, it, it, there, I don't have her language in front of me, so I'm. It it may well, not. Her, right, her language is is really focused on on the subsequent agreement with the feds to okay. include Medicare's continued participation. So she does talk about the design and development of a proposal, including consideration of alternative payment and delivery system approaches for hospitals and community based providers. But I think what Patrick's point is really looking at is what would what is the funding need for the community agencies to be able to carry out the results of the transformation plan. Okay. Well, it makes sense then to have it somewhere. If people are interested in it. I can put it, I think I would put it as an E at the end of the section because everything else is about the board, and then it would direct AHS to to do this work. And I I think you would probably want to report on what they have identified or something. Yeah. And this was, this is to my point of like a lot of what, yeah, it's all it's mixed like up. Yeah. <laughs> it's all mixed up, huh? <laughs> all right. So I'm going to add Patrick's number three here. Okay. And that's on page five. Jen. That is on page five, right. Uh, and then I think you already decided you were interested in adding something about the duals, yes, to the um, to that working group, the moderate needs working group. Um, but it, again, a little bit separate from what they're doing that's focused in one part on including those provisions in the next the next next global commitment demonstration. Um, but I think there's a way to put it in there. Okay. All right. So then at that point, the only other things that I think are outstanding on this, uh, one of them is the whether or not to use preferably inscribing the expertise of the, your experience of the community engagement consultants in working with a diverse rural population. And I think the chair and I did get a response from Robin on that one that they were the preferably language in there um, was to uh, cast a wider net, not knowing who they were going to get um, in response to an RFP. So they, so don't they did get not have somebody in, in mind. Yeah, still that higher so, right. So she said they want someone with experience in rurality, but they don't know who they will get for bids in response to the RFP. Mm -hmm. In the unlikely event, they get no bids from someone with rural experience, or the bid they do get is otherwise unqualified. They want flexibility in the RFP process in order to still move forward. Otherwise, they'd have to go out to rebid or come back next session. That's for a change. She says rebidding is not the end of the world, and if they only got bids that didn't seem like the right people, they do that, but it would delay the process. And she does say they definitely do not have someone in mind at this point, and they're <laughs> actually interested to see what's out there. Okay. All right. I'm I'm fine with taking putting the preferably back in of everyone else's. I share our. Are We're happy? good. That's good. <laughs> and, uh, that that was a tough that was a tough one. <laughs> just, <laughs> no, Nolan has his hand up here. So I was just going to say. Uh, it's better to in, put your intent and what you want, but don't require for that exact reason. I think you're okay, good. thank you. You're, you're so, you work so hard on a number of these grants, so it's important to have that input. Thank you. And then, uh, and then the only other issue I think is really the 
money pieces and who does what. Yeah. So uh, here's my suggestion. Uh, we're good for now. And then we'll hear back. So my suggestion is, Jen, d d don't leave us. But I think that we all need a little break. Okay, so I am. I mean, I was sort of supposed to be upstairs at 1030. Uh, I have been communicating with them and asking if they needed me now or if I could stay here because you were doing markup. So um, but I at some point may get called to go. So let, 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 let's take a five minute let's take a five minute break we'll come back to 239 and 204 and I, I i honestly think we'll be able to move with alacrity alacrity it's a new i wanted to inject some new language vocabulary <laughs> Thank you.